Hey, hey, welcome for the step nine on the tutorial series on how to build a to-do list dApp on Ethereum. And this is the last step of this series. So if you follow this step, then you will actually finish the dApp and congratulations for following up to here. So very briefly, before we continue, I'd like to quickly mention the ebook that I've released on the series. So this ebook is available in PDF, EPUB and Mobi format. It contains all the steps of the free series plus two bonus steps only available in the ebook on how to refactor the DAP with React and another one on how to refactor the DAP with Drizzle. So in the last step, we we have created a, a task from the front end. So we learned how to create transaction with Web3. And our DAP is almost complete, but we also need to toggle the done status for each task. So if you've used some, uh, some to-do app uh, in general, it's possible to have a flag for each task that tell you if the task has been completed or not. And our to-do list DAP will have the same feature and that's what we will do in this video. So as usual, we'll get started at the terminal and after you git clone the repo of the series, then you need to copy over the last step into this new step. So copy step eight into step nine. All right, and so now let's go into the new directory, step nine. And I'm going to open the smart contract first. So contract to do all right and so we want to be able to tell when a task has been completed so in our smart contract tasks are represented with this struct here and so we will want to add a new field to this struct so just below the author field we're going to add another field called date complete and it will represent the date of completion so in Solidity, there is no uh, type for date. So we need to use uh, uint for this. So uint date complete. And below the task created event, we're also going to create another event to signal when a task has been toggled. So we're going to create this event task status toggle. And basically it's going to contain the ID of the task the 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 status of the done uh, of the done field and the date at which the toggling happened. Next, we're going to create a function to toggle this done status. So, go down in your smart contract, and we're going to add this function at the end. Okay. All right, so this function is going to accept a parameter, which is the ID of the task that we want to toggle. Then we're going to apply a modifier to this function. So I already explained modifier before. So it's basically it's a function that is applied before the function that we are executing. So in our case, we check in this modifier task, task exists just below. We just check that the task actually exists. And if that's not the case, then we revert and the whole operation is canceled. And finally, it's a public function. So we add the public keyword. Then at this line, basically, we build a pointer to the task that we want to modify. Um, then we, this is the line where we actually toggle the don't status. So like in JavaScript, we have the not uh, operator here, the, the exclamation point. Then uh, we are going to update the date complete field, but we only do it if the done status is true. And if that's the case, then we set this field to now. So now is a special keyword in Solidity that, that's going to give you the timestamp since, uh, since the beginning of Epoch timestamp, so 1970 or something. Well, I mean, this is the usual way of handling dates in, um, in, in programming languages. So, so we use this keyword now, and if the task is not done, then we're just going to store zero because in this case, uh, it doesn't make sense to, to store anything else. And finally, we're going to trigger the event, to, uh, sorry, to emit the event task status toggled with all the detail of the task. 
All right, and we also need to return this new field in the get task function just above. So the get task function is going to return one more field of type u int, and here we add a line date complete here add a comma, and we also need to make a small change in the create task function. So we scroll up. And here, when we create a new task, we need to also populate the date complete field. So we initialize it to zero. OK, so now our smart contract is complete. And so we will take care of the front end now. So open the render.js file in app slash js slash lib. And in the render task function, where we build the HTML for the task table, we're going to replace this row here with a task uh, indexed for. So we're going to replace it by this. So what's happening here? Instead of just displaying the done status, we display a checkbox that, that will show if the task is done or not. And if we uncheck, if we check it, it will mark the task as done. And if we uncheck it, it will mark the task as undone. Very simple. We're also going to add another row to show the date complete field of the smart contract. And we're going to make use of the format date function that we already created before in, uh, in utils. So I'm not going to, to go over this. But basically, uh, it just make the date um, uh, be, be displayed in a more human friendly way. And the last thing, we need to add a header for this new column in the HTML table. So go to the HTML file index.html and go find the table and just below the done header we're going to add this header all right so we've added a checkbox to toggle the done status of a task but we haven't connected this checkbox with the smart contract and for this we need to put an even handler to the checkbox and have this even handler trigger the smart contract. So go to the main JavaScript file, which is app slash js slash <coughs> lib app.js. And you're going to go to the very bottom in the init function. And just above this snippet here, return new promise, we're going to add another snippet. All right, so what does this do? So this, it listens to the, the task table here. And every time it receives a click that comes from this, uh, this table, then it's going to execute this callback here. And if the click comes from uh, an input, which is the case with our checkbox, then it's going to go inside this if. And here we're going to grab the ID of the task that was uh, checked. So, okay, that's something I think I forgot to, to explain you before. So let me see quickly in the render.js function. Okay, so here in this line where we add the checkbox, you will notice that one of the HTML attributes here is the ID. And it, in this ID, uh, we, um, we fill the, we put the, the, the ID of the task like this. So. Here, what we do uh, in in the in the event listener, it's basically we grab this ID and we make use of uh, of the new feature of JavaScript that allow to do destructuring assignment. So it's going to split into an array the the, the attribute string. The first element of the of the array will be uh, will be this thing here. It's called uh, check checkbox here. And the second element of the array will be the ID. So that's what we'll capture here. OK. Uh, so now we have this ID. And so we can make use of our uh, truffle contract object to execute the toggle done method of the smart contract. And so we, we pass it this ID. And then, uh, then we have to specify from which account this transaction is spent and also what is the gas limit. So that's something I already explained in a previous episode. Um, Okay, and once this is done, then nothing happened. And actually, what do we want to do after we toggle the done status is we want to refresh the UI because at this point, the UI will not be synced anymore to the smart contract. 
So we need to refresh the task here. So refresh the task. It's already something that we do below here in the snippet. So we don't want to just copy and paste because we will just repeat the code. And as you all know, we want to respect the dry principle, which is don't repeat yourself. So whenever you see that you are duplicating some code, it's uh, a clue that you need to create a new function. And that's what we're going to do just above the init function. We're going to create a new function just to get and render the task. So here in this function, basically you have the logic to fetch the task from the smart contract and then to re-render them. So now let's make use of this function. So instead of this snippet, we're just going to make use of a new function here. So that's when we initially load the front end. We want to fetch all the tasks and render them. And also after we toggle uh, the done status of first task, we want to refresh everything. Uh, oops, there is an extra parenthesis here, here too. And semicolon, right? And there is uh, still another place where we want to make use of this function, and this is above. When we create a task, um, if you remember, we have to manually refresh the, the front end, which is not good. So we can also have the front end being refreshed automatically like this. So we remove the console log statement, can remove this also. And also, um, I want to clear the field of the create task form once we refresh everything so here you put an empty string so yeah just some uh, some small improvement and now let's go to the front end of the tab to make sure that everything works fine and first we will create a new task so by milk author julian submit okay and I can see my new task and I can see the checkbox here and no date complete because it's not done yet. And what happened if we trigger it? Yeah, we see a date complete and the UI was refreshed automatically. It works. So I'd like to congratulate you for following the series up to here. It wasn't always easy. It took some time, but finally you were persistent and you were able to complete the tab. So that's really good. And you will learn a lot of things in the process. Now, the question is, where do we go from here? So you have different options. So if you want to keep building on this series, I will add some other steps like I mentioned uh, before in the video. And if you buy this ebook, you will be able to complete these steps. So one step is on refactoring with React and another step is on refactoring with Drizzle. And if you, if you want to go even further, then you can also take my course that I released with Manning where we build a full decentralized exchange for ERC20 tokens. And also another thing that I haven't announced yet, but I'm going to make an official announcement in a couple of days. I will launch a paid screencast for Eat the Blocks with weekly exclusive video for members. It will be about 10 bucks a month and we will see some advanced or intermediate to advanced uh, topics for Ethereum DApp developers. So if you're interested in this, uh, you can write a comment or you can send me an, an email uh, julian at eattheblocks.com. All right. Thanks for following this series, guys, and I will continue to upload great content on uh, on this channel. And you can also put in the com in um, in the comments uh, what kind of um, what kind of content you want to learn at in the blogs. Like, do you want to see other series on other kind of dApps? Please let me know. Thanks for watching, and don't don't forget to like the video if you if you enjoyed it, and to subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.